something off. This one is a base hit. Here are the plate. Serhoff coming in the throw, but Snyder is in time. The game is over. Serhoff would have tied the game, but Snyder throws a strike. That's it. Even the right center field. Freddie Lynn goes back to the front. Put it on the ball. A home run for Cornell Washington on a 3-1 pitch to the Yankees in the bottom of the ninth inning. Win it 3-2. Fastball. The last inning, sudden life. Without further ado, here are some of the best last innings from 1988. Twice, the Padres had taken the lead in extra innings. Both times, the Expos battled back to tie. Now, the Padres had done it again with a seemingly safe two-run lead. Don't go away. We've been here before three times. Hang on. There are runners at first and third. Andres need one more out. Up the middle. Flying run down to second base. Lenny Cook at first base. I don't believe it. So the ball game on the line once again. Mitch Webster steps in. Hard shot into right field. Here comes Marvell Wynn. Throw to the plate. We got another tie ball game. I can't believe it. So now the winning run at third base. Padres led in the 11th, 12th, and 13th, and the Expos have tied it up in every inning. And this one, the base hit of the ball game is over. The Expos win it. Final score, Montreal 7, San Diego 6. Ah, but in the City of Angels, what goes around comes around for the Expos as they lead L.A. by one. Joe Heskett comes on to try to save this one for John Dobson and the Expos. Vicki Hatcher will bat. Hatcher hits a ball toward left center, and it's in the gap, an extra base hit. The tying run is at second base with one out in the back. Hatcher would leave for the quicker Dave Anderson. Tying run at second base, Gibson the hitter. With a blue bat into left center, Rivera can't get it. It's a tie game. Three to three in the ninth. Gibson is the potential winning run. And he has 22 stolen bases. John Shelby. There goes Gibson. Shelby swings and misses. Santa Vega's throw comes up short. The winning run is in scoring position with two out of the ninth. One and two pitch. Right on through the catcher into the screen. Gibson comes to third. He's going to try to score. The play of the plate. He scores and the ball game is over. Craig Gibson on a wild pitch. Scores from second base. The Dodgers win 4-3. In New York, the Yankees had won three straight clutch games against Detroit. Two in their final at bat. Now in the last game of the series, Detroit was trying to cap off a rally in the top of the 18th. And the go-ahead run of Noakes is down at second base with one out. That'll bring up the rookie, Tori Lovello. They set back up the middle. Around third is Noakes. Washington up, but it is thrown, is off the mark. The rally heads are on for the Tigers. The Tigers lead it now 4-3. But in the bottom of the 18th, Ricky Henderson set the table. A high ball score to the Yankees. And a leadoff batter on here in the bottom of the 18th inning is Washington coming to the plate. Four three Tigers here in the bottom of the 18th. It's deep to right field. Flying back is limited to the wall. It's down. Two run home run. Point out Washington. Bottom of the 18th inning. The Yankees come back once again. Last at bat, the Yankees win it. Five four to sweep the Tigers here at Yankee Stadium. Whoa, I can't believe it. In Toronto, there were some wayward glances when incredibly Oakland pitcher Gene Nelson stole a base. But that simply set the stage for slugger Jose Canseco to park one. There he goes, folks. There's number three in this game. Jose put a tape measure on. Alive. It is incredible to what 
watch this man hit a baseball. That thing went 35 or 40 rows up in the left field stands. And there's a forearm bash. There's another one. The heroics were short-lived as Toronto came back to tie. But that just postponed the inevitable from still another Oakland star who showed no mercy. That one is gone. Mark McGuire gives the A's another lead. This time, the lead held up, and McGuire, the very next night in Cleveland, made it Sweet 16 once again. McGuire hits one deep in the left center field. That ball's hit well. It's got a chance, and there she goes. Mark hits those home runs in the 16th inning pretty regularly. He had one yesterday. Incredible, the same thing. They're too tired to give those high four bashes now. What's up, Doc? Nothing that can't be cured by a most likely last inning hero. But so too are their unlikely heroes, guys who sneak up on you and paint their own late inning canvas. What a ball game. Four to four, bottom of the 11th inning. The Dodgers with two in the top of the 10th. They met tied at the bottom of the 10th. Two outs here in the 11th. And brings up Kevin Elster. Last inning, you just can't beat it. This Kevin Romine, Boston's leadoff hitter, hitting cleanup now in the absence of Greenwell. Here's the pitch. Long drive. Ball game's over. Kevin Romine has won it. Seven to six, Boston. The 27-year-old Kevin Romine, only in the game because of the injury to the All-Star Greenwell, today's hero. The home run in the ninth inning is the first that he has ever hit in the big leagues. And what a spot for it. And what a moment. In the news, Baltimore's Jim Traber renders an anthem worthy of a few high fives. Teammate Kurt Schilling has other talents. He can get that back into his mouth by sucking it through his nose. <laughs> the bubble is about to burst. There it goes. <laughs> Meanwhile, in St. Louis, Tom Lawless and Tom Bernanski leave some real food on third base for real person, Eric Gregg. Time is called now to, to home plate up fire season. He's pointing at it. And Greg's Eric. looking out the left field. Eric's looking down the left field. He thinks there's something on the field now. I see. <laughs> Think of it. <laughs> oh, the great days when the season's about over. You see all kinds of things. Like Philly's outfielder, Chris James, trying to master third base. And when he finally does, acknowledging Tim McCarver in the booth for his kind words of support. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was funny. Oh, that, <laughs> that is great. John Drysdale of the Los Angeles Dodgers in May of 1968 began his quest of Walter Johnson's major league record of 55 and two-thirds consecutive shutout innings. 
May 14th, a rather uneventful one to nothing score. May 18th, a one to nothing score. May 22nd, people started a thought, a two to nothing score. May 26th, they began to think about it seriously. By the time we got to May 31st and the Giants, the world was well aware it was just no idle gesture. Drysdale was after the record. Drysdale streak almost ended when San Francisco's Dixie was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. But the umpire ruled that Deke didn't try to get out of the way. I threw him a slider. I remember he went in. I mean, they can go back, they can look at the film. He went in and he just kind of come like this. And the next day, Mary fell. It was funny. Juan told me, he said, hey, he said, don't even think about that. Because he said, he said on the bench, he said, if there was anything but a fastball, he says, I'll end it right here. So it was a gutsy call on the window stat part, and the uh, bases were loaded, nobody out at the time. And every time I see Herman Franks, even today, why he, oh, he gets all over me, you know. Four days later at Dodger Stadium, the Pirates became a major league record sixth straight shutout for Drysdale. All that remained was to catch the big train. That very night, across town in L.A., a bizarre historic footnote was lent by Robert Kennedy moments before he died. I want to uh, express my uh, high regard to uh, Don Drysdale. Yeah! He pitched his uh, sixth straight shutout tonight. And I hope that we have his good fortune in our campaign. In his next start, Drysdale left the train behind. The one-two pitch to Pena. Swung on a ground ball wide at third. It's Boyer who has the chance. He's done it. Drysdale made it 58 straight scoreless innings and was one of few who thought it wouldn't last forever. There's never really been a record freak or anything like that. And I just say records are there to be broken, and someday somebody will come along, and, uh, and they'll probably do the same thing that I did. I don't know if it'll be this year, next year, or whenever. It was a long time before uh, I did it prior to that with Walter Johnson. And now, Oral Hershiser, who is 59 and counting, embraced the past and present with dignity. Ironically, Hershiser too, kept his streak alive with a judgment call against the Giants. First and third, one out, history on the line. Sacks. Goes to Griffin for one. They throw it away. Uribe scores. And the Giants take a one to nothing lead. And they call the interference play, and the inning is over. The inning is over, and take the run away, and the scoreless inning streak is still alive. And it could only happen with the Giants and the Dodgers. I remember back when Don, I see footage of when he hit the batter, and they said the guy didn't get out of the way. And when they called that a double play when the guy went after him, I, I, ran, in, I ran in the dugout, and I thought, holy smoke. In the presence of greatness, only one question remains. How in the world did you not win that ball game? I don't know. <laughs> Saving face in this volatile game of baseball isn't always easy. Stuff happens, and you never know what's going to come up next.
loose so it, it could be handled. Oakland's lineup is stacked with heavy hitters, and that's made it easier for Weiss to be himself. It takes a lot of pressure off me because uh, obviously they're not counting on me to, to uh, carry the load offensively. So uh, I can really just stay within my abilities and uh, just do, go out there and try to do what I'm capable of doing. That's just uh, getting on base and trying to help the other guy to get some RBIs. So uh, it takes a lot of pressure off of me offensively. It's nice to step into the nucleus of a great team, but the athletics also have a special chemistry. And regardless of the task you may face, the cream rises to the top. Anytime you can be around some players like uh, Don Baylor and Dave Parker and uh, Carney Lansford, uh, they're just going to rub you the right way. Uh, they've basically been in every situation this game can handle. And, and uh, so just being around them and seeing how they go about their business and, and how they handle different situations is, uh, you know, very beneficial for me. For manager Tony La Russa, Weiss has managed to exceed all expectations. We expected him to play good. He's played very, very good. I mean, he has really been an outstanding defensive shortstop, and he's got a lot of big hits. So uh, I knew we were going, he was going to play good, or we thought he would, but he's played much better than that. Now, a little history. Jose Canseco was Rookie of the Year in 86, and Mark McGuire was so honored in 87. Can Walt Weiss turn the hat trick in 88? I think at the end of the year, you look at the year I had, and and uh, then, we, then we can decide, and, uh, and if I do happen to win it, I could, I could uh, you know, savor that in the offseason. But during the season, I'm just concerned about winning ball games, and I really haven't thought about it much. Playoff bound on a team with great promise. It's called fulfilling one's goals. I think they're definitely fulfilled. I don't think I'll ever surpass them. Uh, I set pretty high standards for myself, and uh, I try to live up to them. Introducing a 16-minute animated film by Emily Hubley that manages to integrate baseball with the poetry of William Blake. Blake Ball takes us through nine innings of creation and eternity, narrated in part by legendary eccentric Bill Spaceman Lee. Though a shadow of horror is arisen in eternity, unknown, unprolific, self-closed, all-repelling, some said it is you risen. Less art than leisure, the baseball card boon lives on. Like surf books, which feature every Topps card issued for each and every team. Another new set gives today's stars that 50s look. And a special new set of stadium cards. There are even minor league cards with a few ringers thrown in. Enough cards so that no man, much less eight men, is left out. Our stat of the week returns us to Oral's magnificent streak. This was the last pitch he threw for a run in 88. This then was the next pitch. Many more would follow, but few would be called anything less than great. An oral Hersheiser pitched himself a tremendous ball game. The Braves have been shut out for the 13th time. His fourth consecutive shutout. He has a string of 40 consecutive scoreless innings. Oral Hersheiser and the Los Angeles Dodgers shut out the San Francisco Giants. Unbelievable to go extra innings and give him a chance. The one-two pitch. Fly ball to right on a semi-check swing. Gonzalez, the record. On 
deck for this week, a network's dream, as Boston takes on Oakland in the American League Championship Series, while New York markets its hopes against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And on deck for next week's cover story, Tom Brunanski. Last year, a World Series. This year, he's going home. It's going to seem strange when I go back because uh, I've got to go back to Minnesota and pack up the home and we're going to, we're going to move. And when I go back down there and see the guys, it's going to seem really strange. It's going to seem that it didn't happen. This is Warner Fusel.